Hey there, and welcome back. Super fun video in the works here for you, so I hope you'll stick around. So what we're gonna do in this video is take a look at the various common battle zeros, and again, put them to the test out to 400 yards. So you think about our battle zeros that we often hear about, a 25300, we'll test that. A 35300, I'm going to test that. I bumped that up just a little bit based on the data I saw in my app. A 5200, and then a 100 yard zero. What we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot cardboard with various targets on it. From bottom to top, that will be our yardages that we're shooting. So 25, 50, 100, 200, and 300 yards on cardboard. And then I'm gonna shoot a steel target at 400 yards by holding in the head to see where my impacts fall. And then on the cardboard from left to right, I'll shoot the 25, the 35, the 50, and the 100 yard zero. And again, just like we did back in December, at the end of the video, we'll take measurements and see how the various zeros performed versus their theory. So, should be a ton of fun. I hope you'll stick around and join me. Now, really quick, you think about a battle zero, what are we gonna do? So the point of a battle zero is to allow me to hold dead center of a target and make an impact within a couple of inches from that point of aim. So you think about your bullet, your optic has a straight line of sight, and this was a great one in the comments. Everybody called me out because bullets don't rise. I get that coming out of the muzzle, but. If you think about your optic, it's a straight line of sight. When you zero this rifle, you have to adjust the scope so that the barrel climbs to meet your line of sight at a specified distance. So at a 35 yard zero, your optic is looking straight, and then you adjust the optic to bring the barrel up so that, that bullet crosses the line of sight at 35 yards. And then as a result of that, at 35 yards and beyond, the bullet is above your line of sight to a set yardage. In this case, I think about 300 yards. Then when you get back out to 300 yards where the optic is still looking straight, that bullet starts to fall back down and will meet the line of sight again at 300 yards. So when you say a 50 200 zero, that means the bullet climbs to meet the line of sight at 50 yards, above the line of sight until 200, where again, this is straight, and then it falls back down and meets the line of sight. So that's what your battle zero is. So with that, Let's move into a gear review, and then we'll fire up each of the different zeros at each of the different yardages and take a look at how they perform out to 400 yards. So I think this should be really fun. If you enjoy it, let me know in the comments what you think. I'd love to hear from you. What are you running? And from here, let's move into the gear review. For a rifle, I'm gonna use my Knight's Armament SR25 ECC. This is a factory rifle. I've owned it going on 10 years now. It's been featured in the channel in one of my very early videos where I actually pushed it out to a thousand yards and actually a little bit further. So it's a great shooter. And it actually performs really well with M80 ball ammunition. So I think you'll see that in the groups that we shoot today. I think you'll be really impressed with how this thing shoots just military surplus ball ammo. So this is Lithuanian. I found it for sale the other day on SG ammo for a decent price. I bought a couple of hundred rounds so I could shoot this video. So haven't shot this through this rifle before, specifically the Lithuanian, but I fully expect this will do fine. I'm looking for maybe two inches or better performance at 100 yards. So that's the rifle. For a suppressor, it's my Surefire SOCOM 762 Mini Suppressor. Again, I've owned it for years. It's been on this rifle for years. This is actually the suppressor that I got a baffle strike last fall in. No clue why. Surefire repaired it, no problem. I put it back on the rifle, exact same mount, and it runs fine. So not sure what caused it, but we do have the can back, it's repaired. For an optic, I'm gonna be running the right on five tactics, one to 10. And again, this has been in one of my previous videos. I didn't purchase this scope. They actually sent it out to me for use on the channel to run, get some experience with, and maybe do a review later on. And so far, I'm really impressed with this optic. I've got a couple of hundred rounds through it now. I'll put some more through it today. Really happy with the glass clarity. It seems to track really well. When I was getting this thing zeroed at 25 yards earlier, I was able to measure the distance and dial it on, and it did that. So it performed exactly as I would expect. Now, the last time I had this video, which came out in December with a 5.56 rifle, there were a ton of comments around barrel length, bullet, optic height, etc. There's a ton of different variables that we could look at. So the important things to note for this video, 147 grain ball, 16 inch barrel, 1.5 inch optic height. And what you'll find is the results that I'll show you here are specific to this setup. If you've got something a little bit different, different ammo, different barrel, different optic height, 
The theory that I'll show in this video will hold true, but the distances that I show you in the summary might be just a little bit different for you and your specific rifle. So it's really important that you go out and verify what you have on your specific setup. So first up is 25 yard zero at 25 yard line. Three rounds. All right, three rounds, perfectly centered up. We'll push back to 50 yards. All right, so you can see those pushed about 1.5 mils high at 50 yards. All right, so I can see that group up there measuring about two mils high, maybe 1.8 mils high. So we'll push back to 200 yards. Okay, so. I can't see those impacts through the scope. I might run down and take a close up look before I push back to 300 yards, but I know they should be high by maybe eight inches or so, so I'll have to take a look. I believe the 25 yard zero should be impacting just a little bit high here at 300 yards. All right, of course I can't see those on the cardboard. I'll have to take a look up close and see where they landed before we push back to 400 on steel. So now how about we see if we can hit a full size iptic with our 25 yard battle zero. Now at 300, I was just a little bit high. So I know at 400, I'm gonna be trending below my point of aim. So I'm just gonna put the center dot right in the head of that iptic and we'll see where it falls on the body. Super awkward shooting position. Impact. So basically right in the sternum. Impact. 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 So, group's pretty centered up, and I measure that at, call it 0.8 mils low. But holding in the head, very capable of hitting that full size IPSC. All right, so now I've swapped over to a 35 yard zero, and we're going to start over. So, 35 yard zero at the 25 yard line. Let's see how it performs. Okay, so that's definitely impacting lower. I'm going to call it about 0.3 or 0.4 mils low at 25 yards for that 35 yard zero. So let's run it out. So it looks like. Those three rounds are exactly 0.5 mils high. Let's keep pushing out further.
So I believe I see that group up there at about one mil high. Exactly. So trending lower than the 25 yard zero. The group looks decent. Let's keep on pushing out. So I can't see those impacts with the scope, but I trust they're probably hitting just a little bit high at 200 yards. Now let's push back to 300. Here we go. All right, I'm gonna run down and check our paper groups and then we'll push act on steel with 35 yard zero. Zero. Now let's push back out on the full size Ipsic at 400 yards. And again, I'm gonna put my aiming point at head height and we'll see where it lands on this full size Ipsic. Now I've got a bit of a right to left wind. Actually, I'll just put this first round, I'll hold dead center of the head with this first round. Impact. Back. 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 Impact. So, really nice group. All it. One mil low. So, impacting just a little bit lower than the 25 yard zero did. So great performance after 400 on a full size. So in order to get the most accurate data possible, I'm gonna start at the 50 yard line with the 50 yard zero so that if there's any error in the zero, I can correct it before I push to the other distances. So 50 yard zero, 50 yard line. Okay, so the three rounds are probably about an inch. Pretty well centered up. I'm gonna come down two tenths just to fine tune that. There we go, that should be a good 50 yard zero. Now let's move up to 25 and we'll shoot at 25 and then move back to 100 and work our way out. Okay, so you saw me just correct my zero there at 50 yards. I brought it down two tenths. So we should be good and zeroed. Now I've moved up to the 25 yard line with the 50 yard zero. And that landed about 1 point, well at 1 1.4, 1 1.5 mils low at 25 yards, which is exactly what we would expect. So let's push back to 100. All right, pretty wild. So those are just barely high at 100 yards. It looks like they're trending toward the top edge of the orange dot. So let's keep pushing out further, see how we do. Those all felt good. Before I push out to 300, I want to take a close-up look, and then we'll move now back. Now we're at 300 yards with the 50-yard zero. This is where we should start seeing the rounds trend pretty low compared to our distance. So let's see where these land. Again, I'm going to hold dead center on the orange dot. And that mirage is particularly tough right here at the 300 yard line. So before I push back on steel at 400, I want to take a close up look myself. Then we'll move back. 
So I've moved back to 400 yards with the 50 yard zero. And wow, at 300 yards, there was quite a bit of drop there, a lot more than I actually expected out of that 50 yard zero. So before I shoot at 400 yards, you gotta let me know in the comments, do you think I'll be able to connect at 400 yards with this first round by holding in the head? I'm a little bit nervous. I don't think I'm gonna be able to, but this first round, I'll hold in the head just like I've been doing, and we'll see where it lands. Impact, very bottom edge. Nope. I don't know if that was a plate or the T-post. So, when I looked at my app, it actually calls for two mils. And this plate is exactly two mils tall. So I'm going to hold one mil up in the head. So when I hold one minute, it's like they're about a 0.7 below that, 0.8. So it looks like out there from my 50 yard zero, that group is landing about 1.8 mils below my aiming point. So the first round caught the bottom edge of the plate. I think those two misses must have gone under it. And then when I held one mil high, I was able to hit in the body. So. Now, 100 that, yards. I've got five rounds loaded up. Let's put them on the 100 yard dot at the 100 yard line with the 100 yard zero. So, here we go. Not a bad group. Looks like I might have had one round fly high, I believe. I'll have to take a close-up look at that, but from what I'm seeing, I might call that a good 100-yard zero. And now we'll There we go. That one's landed right at two mils low. So exactly what we would expect for a hundred yard zero so it looks like those stacked in at the bottom edge of the orange dot and i'd call that probably three tenths low now we'll go out to 200 yards All right, so those felt good. From here, we'll push out to 300 yards. Now we're back at 300 yards with 100 yard zero, and now our drop is gonna be very substantial. I was just measuring in the reticle. I'm guessing our drop is about 1.5 mils, which in theory is going to put our bullets landing pretty much exactly on top of the 200 yard dot. So I'm aiming at the dot in the upper right corner, and I suspect these rounds will be landing the dot down below that that I was using as my 200 yard aiming point. So we'll see what actually happens. I got five rounds loaded up. Mirage has died down a little bit given it's later in the day, but still there. So here we go with five rounds. All right, that's our last round on paper. I'm gonna go take a close-up look and see where those actually landed, and then we'll push out to 400 yards on steel. So given how substantial the drop was at 300 yards using the 100 yard zero, I don't think it's fair just to hold point of aim in the head and hope for the best. From my app, it's calling for about 2.4 mils of elevation for a 400 yard impact. So just like we did with the 50 yard zero, 
I'm going to hold one mil in the head and see if that will allow us to connect in the body. So one mil to the head for this first round. Extremely calm out right now, so I'm expecting zero windage. In fact, my wind flag is still. Impact. Impact. Back. Back. Impact. So, with one mil on the head, those are landing right at 2.4 mils. So, exactly what my app is calling for. Wow, I don't know about you, but I am feeling that in my shoulder. That was a lot of 308 rounds in a short amount of time, but I had a ton of fun doing it, and I hope you enjoyed watching it. You gotta let me know in the comments, what did you see in each of these different zeros, and which one is your favorite? Which one are you using? Now while you're doing that, I wanna take just a couple of minutes and run through exactly what I saw for downrange performance out of each of these zeros. So before we do that, what do we have here? So we've got our cardboard target that I shot. And I've got orange dots out here from bottom to top that represent the different yardages. So this is my 25 yard, 50, 100, 200, and 300 yard aiming points. And then from left to right, I have the different zeros. So 25 on the left, 35, 50, and 100. So with that, let's just work through each of the individual zeros and take a look at how they perform. So with a 25 yard zero, we had a beautiful 25 yard group centered up. So great performance there, exactly what we would expect. And then, because of the way that bullet has to come out and meet our line of sight, the bullet starts to rise above my point of aim. So at 50 yards, that group is about 2.75 inches above my point of aim. Push out to 100, and now I'm 6 inches above my point of aim. 200, it gets pretty crazy. Now I'm 8 inches to the bulk of this group above my point of aim. So pretty major difference in point of aim, point of impact at 200 yards. And then at 300 yards, as we suspect, that bullet starts to fall back down and start to meet our line of sight. And I actually measured this to the bulk of this group is about two and a half inches high. So when I run the data in my calculator, I see that a 25 yard zero is also basically a 325 or a 330 yard zero. So we're zeroed at 25, the bullet rises above the point of aim, and then starts to come back down and meet again in that 325 yard range. And then at 400 yards, you saw great performance. I was able to hold in that head and get hits pretty well high chest area. So in theory, if you're shooting tall targets, this would be a great performer, as we saw, all the way out to 400 yards. So great performance, but personally, I don't like how high this climbs above my point of aim in the distances between 25 and 325. So with that, I pushed out to 35 yards, which is very similar to what I really like out of a 5.56 rifle. So what did we see there? At 25 yards, the bulk of that group is about 0.5 inches low. So if you have a 25 yard range, you can zero with a 35 yard zero at the 25 yard line if your impacts are a half inch low. Then at 50 yards, again, we start to climb above the line of sight. And here the group is only about 1.5 inch above the line of sight at 50 yards. So quite a bit lower. At 100 yards, we're four inches above my point of aim. So quite a bit tighter here at 100 yards. And then at 200 yards, we're only five inches. So just above half of what the 25 yard zero was. So great performance here. And then at 300 yards, I didn't have the best group. I don't know what happened with this round up here, flew way high. In my measurement, I really didn't count this. So if you take the bulk of this group right here, it measures about two and a half inches low. So this 35 yard zero to me appears to be 35 yard zero and about a 300 ish yard zero, maybe just a little bit short of that. But in my opinion, great performance even in the intermediate distances. So, say you're shooting a little bit taller, more generous target, you've got a great zero here. Hold a little bit low in the intermediate distances at 300 yards, you're dead on. And then, as you saw on the 400 yard steel, I was able to hold in the head and get hits basically mid chest. So, very effective from basically muzzle all the way out to 400 yards on an ipsic or torso size target. So great zero option right here. 
Next up, for those of you that maybe want a little bit tighter spread in the intermediate distances, that'd be your 50 yard zero. And that's exactly what we shot here. So at 50 yards, the 25 yard line, I impacted about 1.25 inches low. So again, if you only have access to a 25 yard range, zero, 1.25 inches low, and you've achieved a 50 yard zero. Then at 50 yards, which is where I started, in theory, this should be zero. Remember, when I shot this, I actually adjusted it down. I believe it was two tenths. So I shot this first, adjusted down two tenths before I, I shot the other. So no error here reflected in the other zero. So I call this zero. At 100 yards, you can see they push just a little bit high. A really nice group right here pushed just a little bit high. I measured that at 0.75 inches above my point of aim. At 200 yards, just like you would expect out of a 5.56 rifle, we're basically zero. So if you take a look at the bulk of this group, really leave out the low flyer, we're zeroed up. Really great performance. Then at 300 yards, this is where things really start to drop off out of the area that I would be comfortable. So at 300 yards with a 50 yard zero, our impacts were 10 and a half inches to the center of this group low. So point of aim, point of impact, 10 and a half inches low. And then when I pushed out to 400 yards, you saw that grow even more. And I did have two low impacts on the plate when I held my point of aim in the head. But my best performance with the 50 yard zero was to actually hold one mil high in the head. And that allowed me to land center chest hits. So a really nice zero option here. Maybe your target is to only shoot out to 250-ish yards. This would be great because it's really nice and tight performance out to about 250. If you start to push beyond that, you definitely need to understand how that bullet is dropping off. So a great zero option, really nice and tight, but you do have to start holding over at the further distances more. And then from there, the zero that everyone probably is familiar with, and many of you are likely running in an LPVO style optic, and that's the 100 yard zero. So what did it show us? At the 25 yard line, this group landed about 1.8 inches low. So if you have access to a 25 yard line and you zero about 1.8 inches low, you've achieved 100 yard zero. At 50 yards, that group landed 0.66 inches low, so just a little bit below our line of sight. 100 yards, I'm zeroed. I did have the one high flyer, but the bulk of that group is zeroed up. And then at 200 yards, we start to drop off again. So 200 yards, I know it's confusing with the different impacts here, but the 200 yard rounds actually landed down here in this group. And I measured the bulk of this group at five inches low. So not a huge difference at 200 yards, but definitely starting to drop off. And then 300 yards is where things get wild. So a 300 yard shot, with a 100 yard zero had my impacts landing 15 and a half inches low. So crazy low, but if you understand how the bullet's flying, you can account for that either by dialing or holding over in the scope. But really cool to see how that actually pans out here in the real world. And then at 400 yards, remember what I had to do there, I held one mil in the head, and I got the impacts that you can see there probably on the lower, say, third of the plate. So come up about a third of the plate, and that's where the bulk of those impacts have landed. So the 100 yard zero is a great option because you're holding over for everything. As you see here, the bullet never climbs above our line of sight. So you're always going to be holding over to make hits with that 100 yard zero. So depending on what you're wanting to do, these different zeros may have a place in your arsenal. If you want to be able to hold center from say zero to 400 yards and make central hits on a fairly tall, generous torso type target, my opinion, 35 yard zero does that really well. We saw that in the video. Maybe you're running a little bit more of a precision type rifle where you don't want the bullet to climb above your line of sight and you want to hold over for everything. That's where the 100 yard zero would make sense. So again, just want to give you a look at what the real world performance is of these different zeros. Certainly there's a ton of theory out there and I'm sure many of you have studied up, but I feel like it's always good to come out and verify real world performance versus the theory. So if you enjoyed that, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what you thought, what you're running and why you're running it. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up. If you've made it this far. I really appreciate you sticking around. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, I'd really like your interaction. I'm really trying to grow this channel and it's your interaction that's gonna help me do that. So. If you enjoyed this video and found it valuable, go ahead and like it, give me a thumbs up, comment, let me know your thoughts. And if you wanna see more of this style content, subscribe to the channel. 
I'd love for you to be on deck for my next videos because I've got a lot of really cool stuff in the works and I hope you'll join me. Finally, find me on Instagram at Mountains Mullets America. It's a great place for us to interact in the direct messages. And I give you a sneak peek of what I'm working on. I've had a ton of video ideas come out of Instagram, so it's a great place for us to interact. So again, thanks for watching. I hope you found this valuable and I hope you'll join me in my next video. Thank you.